This is an excruciatingly long walkthrough of the Earl Boyd's um, Boyd.Earl file and the Boyd, func uh, Boyd module. You can find it here in the source. So we're going to flip over to MacVim and open up the nerd tree. You can see it's in source and it's Boyd. And we'll close nerd tree again, go to the top of the file. And here we go. This is the Boyd module, some exported functions, some state, uh, the buffer PID. Whenever we send these Boyds, these autonomous objects are going to send drawing objects up to a canvas. But we need to, whenever we get uh, a new update, whenever we have a new animation um, tick, we need to draw, we need to clear the canvas and redraw everything. So if all the Boyds are sending up their updates to the canvas and redrawing all the time, we'd have no way of clearing the screen. And so we want to buffer all the updates that we get in this um, animation tick and then send them all at once so that the canvas can blank it out and then redraw everything that's changed since the last tick. So we need a buffer. And then we need to have a heat map to map out what the hottest places on the canvas are, but they're not heat per pixel, they're heat per grid square. So we break our canvas up into a grid and then track heat per cell. And we have what shape this this void is, and max height, max width of the canvas, and then the maximum red, green, and I think it's this is the um, red, green, and blue that we pick for this void based on a maximum red, green, and blue, and then it's x and y coordinates. So we have a function, a public API function, to generate a state object that we can send into this void. So you can see here when we create a void, uh, we send in the state, but other um, Modules won't know what the state is. Uh, Erlang records are local to the module and they're a compile time, they're syntax sugar, and it's simply a tagged tuple. So it'll generate a tuple that has state as the first element of that tuple. So when we have this public API state function, we're going to generate the state for a void that we can pass to another module that it can then pass in to us. And the reason we do that is so we can generate a whole bunch of states and then generate a whole bunch of, of voids at once. But void has the the void module has the logic for how to generate a random void. So we pass it the max height, max width, and it'll generate a random X and Y coordinate from that. And then we'll pass it in the maximum RGB values, and it'll generate random red, green, and blue based on that. So for instance, if green and blue are zero, then it'll just generate uh, some amount of redness. And then it generates the state record, which again, just be a tag tuple that'll go back with red, red green, and blue, max height, max width, shape, whatever blah. Here we start our void process and we pass it in the state and it inserts itself in the heat map and then just calls void. And void is our recursive function. It takes the state um, and this is modeled after a gen server and so it grabs its buffer pid, heat map pid, its shape, its x and y coordinates and its red, green, and blue and right away um, it sends itself to the buffer so right away it draws itself to the buffer and then it's going to uh, change itself for the next cycle. You could do this either way. You could change itself and then draw it or you can draw it and then change it. So our old X and our old Y, we'll send that back to the buffer. We're gonna draw this. We use shape, dot, uh, shape colon shape to generate um, some shape data so we can uh, we uh, uh, offload that somewhere else so we don't need to know how to draw shapes because the heat map also draws shapes. Send it the old X, the old Y, the, our size and our red, green, and blue. Shape will uh, bundle that up to a shape object and we'll send that off to the buffer. Then we'll send ourselves uh, a message. Um, so this will be the next, uh, next call. Uh, cycle time, it'll call draw again. Actually, I guess this what this really does is it, it sends the message and then we immediately wait for it. So this will draw ourselves and then we'll wait and then we'll receive draw again. And so we get the draw function, or the draw message, and we generate our next point, and then we tell our heat map that we're moving, and point to grid tells us based on the origin of our void, where it is, that'll find the particular cell that it's in on the heat map. And then we call void again with the new state. So that'll go through, it'll, it'll take that new point, it'll draw itself, and then it'll send that to the buffer, and then it'll wait again. If we got a message other than void, or the sorry, the atom draw, then it will just uh, log that to the console. And if we don't receive anything in five seconds, it'll log back to the console and the void will die. 
So here we had our next point function to figure out where we're going to go next. And we're going to move uh, three pixels at a time, or three, maximum three up, or th uh, three on the y-axis, three on the x-axis. And then we have our heat map. We ask the heat map for how much heat is around us. And again, we use point to grid. So if we're at, say, you know, 53x uh, and 21y, that will be the third cell over, or third cell down, and like the fifth cell over. So we're not trying to track heat per pixel. That would be uh, overkill. Then we filter out our valid moves based on the maximum height and width of this canvas. And then we get the heat. Um, uh, based on our valid moves, we'll get the heat. Um, that was the valid moves. Uh, we got our heat. And oh yeah, we filtered the heat to get the valid moves from the heat. And now we're taking valid moves and we're sorting the heat that we got back. So this will be the x, y, and the heat one. And the sorted function takes one heat and another heat. So this will be some x, y, and heat, and some x, y, and another heat. And it'll sort the list by how hot they are. And then it will generate x, y multiples. Um, so a multiple will be either negative one, zero, or one, depending on if we're going left, right, or not moving at all for those heat values. So the heat map has told us, okay, the cell to your left is this amount of heat, cell to your right is this amount of heat, top left is this, top is, is so and so much. So we'll sort those and then figure out the multiples based on those cells. Then we'll uh, figure out the new X and Y based on those multiples and those distances and make sure that we, if we go too far to the right, we wrap around. But of course, we've added this valid move filter, so we can't do that anymore. So that's the leftover code that needs to be fixed. And we return our new X and our new Y. X, Y multiples again takes um, uh, takes X. Okay, so if we didn't, we're calling X, Y multiples up here with the sorted heat. And if that list is empty, then we just generate eight random um, X, Y multiples from negative one, negative one to one, one. And we take out the origin zero or the middle zero. So we don't just stay in one place, although we could. And then we, I should actually probably add that back in. And then we just pick a random direction and go there. That's if we had no heat. And if we did have heat and we specify a max heat, and this needs to be rewritten because it's wrong. Like right here, I have a maximum heat of 60, but I've specified a max heat, so I need to fix that. So in the case where we have, uh, so we, or sorry, we go through each heat that we got, and this is an X, Y coordinate, and then um, H, it also could, could also be called point heat. For each one of those that's less than 60, if we don't get any, then we just take the coolest one, we reverse the list, sorted by amount of heat, and take the head, so that'll be the last element, and we return the first element of that, which will be the xy coordinate. Otherwise, if we only have a list, I don't even think this will match, because um, each, uh, we're returning the entire tuple, which will have an xy tuple wrapped inside of a, a point heat tuple. So this won't ever match, so this is useless. This should be a tuple in here uh, instead of just a list. It should be a list of one tuple with a xy tuple and then a heat value. Otherwise, if we've got multiple uh, valid heat, we bind that to valid heat and we take out the, um, uh, they're sorted in, in heat order. So this is gonna be our maximum valid heat. And I don't know why, uh, I point that out without using it. Then best heat, we filter all the heat values for ones that are less than the maximum heat. So that's our, um, that's our, the, really that's all the ones that fit below the maximum heat. And I don't know why I call that best heat because that's all the valid heat. Um, and then I pick a random one. So I think my logic is a little bit off here. Valid move filter again, that just makes sure that your X's and Y's are between zero and the maximum width, zero and the maximum height. Point to grid, we find the, I'm not sure if this is correct, we find the cell size, we divide the by two to get the center, and then um, we take, um, I guess, uh, we move to the, we move, we take the X, which is the top left of our void, and we get the center of the void, and we divide it by the cell size, which is the heat map cell size. So if this is, you know, if, if we're at 85x and each void is 10 wide, we'll go to, uh, we'll add half of that, so we'll be at, we'll be at 90x, and if the cell size is 10, then we'll be in the ninth cell over. So 85 is the ninth cell. So zero, the zeroth cell would be anywhere the pixels um, uh, 
0 to 9. So that translates us to the grid, point to grid, which I guess is aptly named. And then random colors, you can't take random uniform of 0, so we take that one out. And then cycle time just grabs the uh, Earl Boyd's application cycle time environment variable. And if you use the three argument version of this with a default, you don't have to worry about unwrapping it from the tuple. So I just learned that the other day. So there you go. That's a brief over, or I guess not a, not a brief over. That's a that's a exhaustive overview of the um, the Boyd module that is the autonomous actors in this uh, what's supposed to be a swarming animation.